Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Rebels on Sports Talk, episode 42. Episode 42. And we doing it. We got a lot of stuff we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the two game sevens that just passed. We're going to talk about the Clippers' Suns' first game in the Western Conference Finals. Game two tonight. I'm hyped to see that. Uh, we're going to preview the East Final, of course. And then we're going to talk about who's got the most pressure from the East or the West. We're going to talk about both games and who's got the most pressure to win and make it to the next level. Baseball talk. I had to wear my Mets, even though I know Drew. I know the Mets lost three out of four to the Nationals. Whatever, man. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not even getting into baseball today. I just wanted to rock the Mets. So you, oh, you can't even. You be listening to me, Dag, on it, Drew. I wore this for you. That's all. You need to check it out on YouTube and not just listen to the podcast. But anyway. We're going to talk about that, and then college football is doing all kinds of stuff. We're going to talk about turning up, turning down, what we think about that. But, of course, the first thing we're going to talk about is the Game 7s. And one this day, Lil Stevie Wonder, everybody knows who Stevie Wonder is. Lil Stevie Wonder, 13 years old, released his first single. It was called Fingertips. And I'll tell you what, watching that game, the, nut, <laughs> the Nets and the Bucks, when Kevin Durant let that, first of all, in the regular, in the regular um, before the overtime in the regular part of the game, I told my wife, I said, yo, they going to give it to Kevin Durant. He's going to three and win the game. Sure enough, by this much, or maybe by some fingertips, it was on the line. It was on the line just by some fingertips. It's crazy because I just knew he was going to make it. I, I feel that when I watch Kevin Durant. It's crazy. But then also, same note, fingertips, that last shot in overtime. When he shot it, I thought it was going in. <laughs> I just expected it to go in because it's Kevin Durant. And he was on fire like that. When he missed, he looked like he was confused and he was shocked. He looked like, oh, that, ain't, that ain't really happened. That ain't really happened. And then the good thing his mama was over there to console him. And then, I'm not going to take no shots on KD. I'm not going to. Um, I know I've been critical about him joining up with the teams. But I think it's just because, look at, look at what Game 5 did. Look what he did in Game 5. He willed his team by himself and did what? Did it, did, did it, did the thing. That's what we know you can do. That's what we know you can do. That's why when you leave OKC, when you up 3-1 and then go to Golden State and win there, yeah, you win there, but we expect you to win there. They was winning before you. They was winning 72 games. I mean, come, come on, man. Come on. So people talk about, oh, well, that game, we don't we don't look at Kevin Durant the same. Yeah, we, we shouldn't look at him the same. That should be a reminder of he's the best player in basketball. He's been the best player in basketball for a while now. So you don't need to join up with two more players in the top ten in the whole league. You don't need that. You don't need that at all. Why? Why are you making everything so easy? You got that killer mentality inside of you. Let it out. Let it out. Maybe he needs to have a change of number in my mentality moment or something. I don't know what he needs, but he is that killer. He's got it. But I don't want to see you being a front runner killer. I don't want to see you up with superstar players winning, that game five showed everybody what you can do. So I think it's no question he's the best player in basketball. His shot in front might be the prettiest shot I've ever seen in my life. I mean, other than Kobe's, but but to be so tall, seven foot, I mean, the way he just shoots, is ever, it looks so pure every time he shoots. And he can do some other things too, you know what I'm saying? He can pass, he can, he can play defense, he can do so many things. And I think when he plays with all these other players like that, you don't get to see all of KD. Go to State, let him do a little bit more. But I feel like playing with Kyrie Irving and James Harden, he can't do all the things he wants to do. Maybe he don't want to. Maybe coming off an injury, he ain't want to. Maybe he thought, hey, I'm coming off injury. I might need some support. But I'll tell you what, you don't. You don't. At all. You don't. And the Nets will win the chip next year. I could probably almost guarantee it. Why wouldn't they? They're gonna have Kyrie and James Harden back. Blake Griffin come back. You know, some other some other players are gonna come back or come to the team. They'll add some more shooting. They'll add some more of this. They'll add this. People are gonna take the minimum to go there, just like they did for Miami. It, it reminds me of almost the same thing. When they were down, whatever, whatever, and they started off whatever, whatever, and then they lost to the Mavericks. Then what? You know what I'm saying? Then it's like, oh, okay, well, here we go. And that's what it looks like, man. You know, it looks like that. And I can't see anything else unless some more crazy stuff happens in the NBA, which it could, which it could. Like, we can get Dame over there playing 
Let me bring it down with LA. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say Bradley Beal no more because I, I talk about Bradley Beal all the time because I think he's that guy when he's positioned with other players. <coughs> so, but anyway, but let's talk about the Bucks then. The Bucks finally, they did it. They did it. The Bucks did it. I won't say finally because they made it to the East Conference Finals a couple years ago and they lost to Kawhi in the bounce game. But, uh, hey, that was, I think that was a franchise-changing series. I think if they lost that, and it looked like they were going to get destroyed when it first started. If they would have lost it like that, I think Giannis would have been like, why did I sign that big deal? He might pull something in the next year or so to get out of there. I think by winning that game, I think he has more faith. I think he has faith in the organization. I think he has faith that they're going to add players. Because I didn't think they would. When they added Drew Holiday, I was like, he's a solid player. He's a star-ish type player. Not superstars, but he... You know, right there in the line of all stars, stuff. I mean, whatever. But we saw Game Seven. He played. He shot horrible. Middleton shot horrible. Who they tried to say is a superstar? No, Chris Middleton is a star. Um, he can shoot the ball. He's a skill set that way. He has he has one on one potential. And don't his silhouette look like Kobe? I swear it doesn't. He wears Kobe's. Anyway, I know I talk about Kobe, but I'm going to. So deal with it. <laughs> But, um, you know, you got Giannis, who's limited. He can't shoot. At least he tries to shoot unlike somebody else, which we'll get to. But keep working. Keep working on your crowd. Keep working. Because, guys, I think having guys like Drew Holiday, P.J. Tucker, they brought mad toughness. This team would never have won without them two on the team. P.J. Tucker, I mean, granted what he did with KD, he just brought that toughness mindset to them. Andrew Holiday, same thing. Then two, yes, sir. And when D, D Vincenzo or whatever his name is, my, that's my wife's favorite player all of a sudden. Uh, when he comes back, he's going to still bring that toughness. Brooke Lopez plays tough. Um, you know, they got players that were that were more significant players on their team. You know, Bobby Portis. Remember when he was with the Bulls, you know what I'm saying? These players were more significant. And how does Brooke Lopez feel? He was on the net sink when they were – Trying to be good without getting all the super duper stars with Levert and all them boys, you know what I'm saying? D'Angelo Russell, you know what I'm saying? And then they say, Get out of here, whatever, whatever, whatever. And now he's there. You're right there now, Brooke Lopez. And I think Brooke Lopez is very underrated, yo. He's not Robin Lopez, he's Brooke. But, um, then, so I look and I look at it like, and I shouldn't be thinking like this, but the Bucks are probably the favorite out of the four teams to win, to win the chip. Out of the four teams, they might be, especially only, only because Kawhi Leonard is injured. Kawhi Leonard comes back game two, three, whatever, whatever, whatever. I think they become the favorites again because I think Kawhi Leonard would be the best player in the playoffs left. I think the player, I think the team with the best player is going to win. I think all the teams are that close, yo, um, if you look at it. And that's going to be a topic for another episode. But, um, yeah, if you look at the four teams left, it's what it is. Um, but I'm excited for the Bucks to win just because I did not want the Nets to win. I do not like these super power teams. Um, just getting together like that and just whatever. Like, I wish Harden would have went to somewhere else. I wish they would have made that Ben Simmons Harden trade. I would have loved to see Joel Embiid beating Harden versus Kevin Durant and Kyrie and, and seeing, you know, other other stuff. That would have been awesome to watch. But um, it, it is what it is. People want to take easy routes. That's fine. Um, but the Nets will win next year because they're going to add more players. I mean, people forget they had LaMarcus Aldridge on their team. <laughs> if he didn't have the heart condition, I mean, they still would have won. That's how crazy their team is. So, I mean, whatever. Good game seven. Great game. I mean, that game was great. Great. All kinds of players contributed. It was unbelievable game. Unbelievable game. Made it even better that the Bucks won. But it was a great game. I don't know if y'all remember, but um, y'all can go back a few episodes before the series started. I did say something about um, Atlanta beating the 76ers. I said I had no faith in them like that but just because. I don't know. I don't know. I had this weird feeling like Atlanta was hot. Atlanta's on the roll. But it also helped that my Pharrell Award goes to, guess who? Ben freaking Simmons. I mean, yo. Come on. Yo. Yo. When you were coming out of college... Which you came out of LSU. What's LSU? The non-shooting school? The big man? I mean, what's going on? You can't shoot when you're LSU Shaq? Ben Simmons? Y'all can't shoot? 
Y'all are special forces. I mean, Shaq was unstoppable. Ben Simmons is supposed to be this wizard with the ball and all this, which he's a talented player. He's an all-star. But, hey, you got you ain't shooting the ball. You cross somebody up. You go into the rim. You can dunk it. You pass it off. What kind of mindset you got? You here for a paycheck? I know you signed your big deal. I want a killer out here. I want somebody trying to win. Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid should have won MVP. If he didn't get hurt, he would have. But think about his career. All the way back to Kansas. Hurt, hurt, hurt. They let him slide. He went to the draft. Still got picked high. La, 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 hurt. Trust the process. We're going to weed him in. The past few years, yeah, he's injured, but the injuries are less. Their injuries are less. He's learning to play with more pain. He played with a torn minute. Yo, he was hurt. And he still balled out and battled and pushed everything he had. Ben Simmons, you can't shoot the ball. You can't shoot the ball at all. Yo, I looked out there. I was telling people I was watching the game with. I was like, yo, look out there. He's not going to shoot. They're not going to play play with him at all. They're going to shadow off of him, which makes it harder for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? At some point, all you saw was Embiid or Curry shooting the ball. That's all you saw. You know what I'm saying? The hats off to Seth Curry. I remember talking about it all the time. I know my wife gets out of here. So Seth Curry used to play for uh, Golden State's G League team. Used to be the D League. I'm like, yo, why ain't we getting him as a Laker fan? This is back, back in the day. When he was in the G League, not too long ago, really. I was like, yo, he can shoot. He's a curve. What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. He kept working on his craft, working on his craft, battling, battling. Played for Portland, got a contract from the Mavs, did all this. And now he's now he done found a home, it looked like. And if it ain't, then he's going to be a big trade piece for somebody else. Whether if they got to trade Ben Simmons and throw in Curry with it to make it happen, which they might. Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen. But Joel Embiid deserves better. Joel Embiid deserves better. And I look at it and I say, what are we doing? What what are you doing? You know, people put all the blame on Ben Simmons. And I, and I put most of it on there. But I'm going to tell you what. We forget who the coach is. He's had many letdowns, many failures, many 3-1 different losses. Yeah, he got he got one chip. You got one chip when you, when you got your chip with the three stars coming together for the first time. Remember, that was the first time that all these stars came together. Now, granted, it was by a trade. So I don't mind it as much as by trade, but that's how it all started was them in Boston. And he got his ring there. And then he lost it because Kobe came through. And we didn't need three gigantic superstars to do that. That's what I be trying to say all the time when nobody listens. Anyway, but yeah, Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers, what are you doing? You know y'all can't score many points, right? Embiid is one slip away from being hurt. And you got Ben Simmons who won't shoot. And Dwight Howard, who's I don't even get me started on him. Can't shoot. You got both of them in the game at the same time. Now on offense, what are you doing? You're putting the pressure on Tobias Harris, Curry, and Embiid to shoot. Don't let one of them be out of the game. Then what you relying on? Then what you relying on? So I think Doc Rivers needs some of this blame too. Like, what are you doing? I don't care about regular rotations and all this going on. Watch the game. Pay attention to the flow of the game. Pay attention to the matchups. Your coach, pay attention to the matchups. It's not working. That was not working. Why do you have both of them in at the same time? When both of their skill sets is defense. You gotta score the ball. Your superstar is is not hundred percent. And then you got Seth Curry. You relying on Seth Curry to get you 35? What? That's what you relied on? You paying money to these three three boys. You paying all your salary to three dudes, and you relying on Seth Curry to come in here and save you? Doc Rivers, I'm not gonna let it slide. I'm not gonna let it slide. Everybody's getting better. Uh, and B's getting better. Curry's getting better. Why ain't Ben Simmons getting better? It's your sixth year. Coming up. I mean, what are you doing? You still can't shoot, dude? You still can't shoot? You still can't shoot? What's Stephen A. Simmons say today? He got a text saying that he don't work hard. He don't listen. And the only people he's around is his family. And all they do is baby him. That's hurtful right there. Dang. That's crucial, yo. That's crucial. But, um, hey, 76ers, I don't know where y'all go from here. It's intriguing to see what's going to happen. I'll take Ben Simmons. I'll trade Kuzma and Dennis Schroeder right now and a first-round pick because I don't need him to score. I don't need him to do all that. Play the point, whatever. I need everything else you can bring because Kuzma ain't doing it. So, 
76ers, we're going to see what's going to happen with them. I think they're going to make a splash. I think they're going to try to trade him. Um, but we'll see what's going to happen. They're talking about, we're going to work with him. Work with him six years. Earn your craft. Learn your craft. Embrace your craft and excel at it. What do you? Why are we waiting so long? Why? I don't get it. Um, I think it's safe to say Trey Young is a superstar. He's got the moxie. He's got the moxie in him that so many players just wish they had. He's got it in him. You got I me. Mean, you got the young boy Collins McNanovich. The team is so young. This team's so sorry. When they fired, they fired their head coach. They were sorry. Now look at the difference in the coach of Nate McMillan. He's had success everywhere he's went. He got fired by the Pacers. He made them relevant. Now look at the Pacers. Look what he has done to that team. Look how he's transformed things. Look how he's managed players. Look how he's substituted. Look how he's done so many things. Nate McMillan is a hell of a coach. Hell of a coach. And he needs to get more respect than that. I'm tired of hearing this interim tag. Take the tag off. Sign him to another contract or be the head coach. You better do it. Because I tell you what, Trey Young feels confident with him. Them young boys feel confident with him. And if they ain't happy, your teammate will be right. You better keep them happy. And I think they want Nate McMillan. You know? So, now we got the Bucks and the Hawks. The Hawks playing with house money. The Hawks playing with house money. Nobody expected them. People were saying they were going to lose to the Knicks. Yeah, I might have been one of them. I think I told Brandon that. I mean, he's making a parlay pick. I think I did. You know, but hey, here they go. I t- I'll tell you what, I enjoy watching him. I enjoy watching him. But I like Giannis. I like Giannis, but he needs work. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to be one of my whatever, whatever. But I like him. I think he's a, he's a good dude, whatever. I like their team. Um, I just think they're going to be too much for the Hawks. But hey, everybody, every series we think they're too much for the Hawks. So who knows? When you got somebody that's cutthroat and ain't scared of nothing like Trey Young, they always got a chance. The young boy cop, yo, they, they ain't scared of nothing. I've seen both of them players buck up on everybody on the other team every game. I mean, they bumping, bumping shoulders. They don't care. They're not intimidated by anybody. That's what makes it awesome to watch. The Bucks, don't let them start going down or losing or be down 2-1 or, heaven forbid, be 2 nut or something like that. They might think about years past and crumble. They might. Or they might say, I'm down 0-2 to the Nets and we coming back. You never know with this team, man. This team is different like that. But I think having P.J. Tucker and Drew Holiday is going to make sure they stay over the top. I think Tucker's going to be on Trey Young. Or maybe not. I don't know how they're going to play it. Who knows how they're going to play it? I'm not their coach. But I think it's going to be an entertaining series. We'll see how it goes. In the West, game two tonight, Clippers Suns. First game was very entertaining. I'm so disappointed about Chris Paul not playing because of the whole COVID thing when LeBron and Eric. Whatever. We don't know what's going on. It's funny how everything's hush-hush about it. Why is everything hush-hush about Chris Paul? Say what happened. Because you know everybody's going to compare that to what happened with LeBron. That's exactly what's going to happen. But anyway, that's the difference. That's the difference in the teams. You know what I mean? Chris Paul has changed the mindset of that squad. And, and yeah, I think it started in the bubble last year. I think the success they had in the bubble told them, hey, we could do it. But Chris Paul influence on Booker and Aiton is, is crazy. I watched the game. Andre Aiden is gigantic. He's big. He's acting like a little child. And there was parts of that game where they took him out because of the matchups. You know, great coach. Great coach, Monty Williams, who should have been a Laker. Great coach. Great coach. Another one. But anyway, he took him out for match reasons. He's still on the sidelines. And this is a guy that's a starter who's coming into his own from these playoffs. What he did to my Lakers and Anthony Davis. You know, what he's doing to... Um, Denver and everybody, you know, this guy is coming to his own. But he realized this series, he might have to sit out some because they go small. He's still the biggest cheerleader. Those are the kind of players I want on my team. And that's what happens when Chris Paul's in the locker room because he ain't never been that kind of player. He would sulk. He would do things. Booker's still a booker, but having that chirp in your ear, you the man, you the man. Ask Reggie Miller what Mark Jackson did to him. You the man, baby, you the man, you the man. That changes everything. That confidence. Booker already had it, but you keep getting it from a future Hall of Famer telling you in your ear like that. And he's a coach off on the floor from, from off. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they can win the first game. Now, granted, yeah. Kawhi wasn't there. Kawhi wasn't there when they beat Utah about a couple games. And they looked better. 
They look better. I'm not going to say they better without it, but the ball move, they weren't looking like, okay, let him do it. They were like, no, we can do it too. We, we NBA players, let's go. And and as a Paul George fan, I enjoyed watching it. If Kawhi Leonard says he's not going to play the rest of this season, I would cheer for the Clippers to win. Yeah, Drew, I said it. Yeah, Drew. Uh, Drew goes live. What's up with the baby? Did you have a baby yet, man? I ain't heard from you. If you did, God bless. If you haven't, I hope your wife's doing well. Uh, yeah, Mills. Talking about an ATL. Y'all got a chance. But, um, yeah, man. We'll see. We'll see what's going to happen with that. But I think I think the infectiousness of Chris Paul changes everything. So, going with that, fact or fiction. So, we're going to talk about the West first. Since we were just talking about the Suns and the Clippers. Who's the most pressure on? Who's the most pressure on out of, out of anybody involved? Well, I'm going to say my fact, fact or fiction, I think it's Chris Paul. I think it's Chris Paul. I think just because he's been through so much adversity all his career and this COVID thing is another thing, but his team is holding down for him, this is his best shot to win a ring. I don't know how much more he's got in the tank. This is his best shot to get a ring. And some people are going to say Kawhi. Kawhi's already done it. Kawhi's already done it with two teams. He's already done it. People say Paul George. Paul George got a little bit of pressure, but now with Kawhi not there, I think that pressure's kind of subsiding. And I think that's why he played better these past few games. Because that pressure right there, he's like, hey, they don't expect me to do nothing. He went from pandemic P to playoff P. So he's a close second, but I think it's Chris Paul because I don't know how many more times Chris Paul's going to be there. I just don't know. And then in the Eastern Conference, who's it most important to from either team? You know, some people are going to be like, it's Giannis. Some people are going to be like, it's whoever. It's Coach Bud. It's the coach from Milwaukee. People say it's just because they beat the Nets that he's off the hot seat. I would I would probably agree with that if they were playing Philadelphia. You're playing the Hawks. You're expected to win this. You, you just beat the Nets. If you mess around and lose to the Hawks, and if you mess around and lose like 4-1, 4-2, some craziness, he's getting fired. He's going to get fired. I think it's all about Coach Bud. And I think he's a daggone good coach. He's he's won 70-some percent of his games. Great coach. But that's what I'm saying. That's both my facts. Fact or fiction. Chris Paul and Coach Bud. Y'all let me know what you think. Um, we, we finish it with basketball for a minute. I'm going to get a couple things in real quick. My trending up, trending down before I get out of here. Trending up has to be college football. College football is trending up. They talk about paying players. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know. Whatever's going to work. I don't know. I see a lot of weird stuff with that. But my biggest thing is letting the people get paid for your own likeness. Hey, let them go to the mall and sign some autographs and make some money. They can't work. They can't do nothing. It's your name. Use it how you want to use it. You know what I'm saying? And then the 12-team playoff. I think it's excellent. People are saying they water it down the regular season. The regular season doesn't matter anymore. No. It will. I think you make the 12-team playoffs the winner of each Power 5 conference is in there. And then you got like, you know, make the conference champions get in. Let them get in. You know what I'm saying? It, of course, you got the Power Five conferences, but let the other, let some other conference champions get in. If you win your conference, you should be able to get in. You should be able to go to Power Six, Power Seven, whatever. Let them in and decide then. And of course, you got maybe maybe four, um, four or so, whatever, whatever number it is. I don't know. But I think by doing that, it's going to help. Everything. So instead of Miami or instead of Alabama having four number one prospect running backs on their team, you might have two of them say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere else and market myself because I'm getting paid for likeness. Being here in Alabama, third string, fourth string running back, they're not going to know who I am, but I can go somewhere else and get money. And then, hey, if I help my team win their, win their conference or whatever, then I'm going to the playoff. I think you can see a lot more things get smoothed out that way if we do that. I'm all about that. Since you got the transfer portal doing all kinds of crazy things, why not? You might have a quarterback that's sitting behind two others who's a star. He might say, you know, I don't want to wait. I want to go out here and make some money off my likeness and help a team win the conference championship and go to the playoffs. It might help my NFL stock by people seeing me. I think it's nothing but great news for college football. Of course, the purists are going to say, no, no. I don't believe in that. 
I never believed in the whole BCS when you had to vote for stuff and everybody's picking. Come on, man. It's money. Money's involved with all that. But you let people that win their conference get in there and play. That I want to see that. Why not? We can always assume David's going to beat Goliath. I mean, Goliath's going to beat David. But hey, sometimes David pulls that upset, Boise State. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, it happens. It happens. That's my trending up. I think college football is thinking broad picture, and I like that. Thinking not broad picture, trending down, baseball. Whole baseball. Now they're talking about this, they're talking about that. They get called out by players for balls and this and that and this. Now we're talking about, we're going to punish pitchers for putting sticky stuff on substance. How long have they been doing this? How long have they been doing this? And ain't nobody care. My thing is, nobody cared to say anything before. So what are we looking for? What are we looking for? Some people say, hey, we want them to have control. We want them to have this. We want them to have that. There must be a reason that they allowed this for so long. Must be a reason. Must be. And it wasn't all these no-hitters before. So excessively, it must be something crazy going on. Excessively, we let steroids. Excessively, we got buzzers on chests and all this. Figuring out signals and everything else. Cut out the excessiveness. The sport was fine before. Cut out the excessiveness and you're fine. And stop lying to each other. I don't understand what's wrong with them, the culture of baseball. You ain't lying, you ain't, you ain't trying. Oh, you in the home run, you smiled about it? I'm going to hit you with a 100 mile an hour fastball. It's assault. It's assault. You knew it was going to happen. What are you going to say? Oh, huh, oh, huh, oh, you're throwing out of the game, huh? Oh. I wish I could throw a ball 100 miles an hour at somebody I ain't liking. All they're going to do is throw me out of the game. Shit. <laughs> Let me try one time. Let me pick somebody to throw a ball at. I mean, come on, baseball man, y'all gotta get it together. What is going on? Y'all don't y'all don't hype up your players. You don't hype up anybody. Owen Stewart, five four chopper. I need you to come help me out. Talk some baseball talk. Change my mind because I don't see it. I don't see it at all. Let me know what y'all think. Timmy, Brian, Fred. Jay Hollywood, appreciate y'all. See y'all at work tomorrow. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Keith, Tommy, Brandon, everybody in the Fantasy Football Factory. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Jay Holly and Prime, keep doing what you're doing on the rhymes. Appreciate all that. The great mind, Shaman, love the support. Thank you so much. Keep sharing everything. Um, give me feedback, baby. Give me feedback. Continue to play and continue to share. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. See y'all next episode.